All right. Um, I, my name is A.B. Lugo. I am, let's see, Latino, Latine, Latinx, Latinx, whatever you want to call it. Um, my parents are were born and raised in Puerto Rico, and I was born in El Pueblo Lo Más Grande de Puerto Rico, New York. So, yeah. <laughs> Like my friend Mariposa, the famous writer and poet, says, Yo no nací en Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico nació en mí. And so that's how I grew up. Um, I am an, the easiest way is writer, performer is the easiest way, but um, let's see, actor, director, I've produced, I've written um, poetry I've, that has been published, I've written plays that have been produced. Um, so yeah, I do a little bit, un poco de todo. Nice. Um, uh, and and I mean, some of the plays you've done. I mean, I, I I I'm just meeting you now, so like you've been posting stuff from back in the day, and I see you like in plays, and and um, I mean, I guess that's where I, I want to go first. Is that you? Because yeah, aren't we like thirty second cousins or something? Thirty from second. the Alamo line in Puerto Rico. Oh yeah, you said that who was who had uh, Alam on your side? Oh my gosh, I gotta find it. I gotta look it up. But it's like there is somebody named Alamo on somewhere in my family way back. And way I, back, I, back. I went to I went to UIC and I took a class taught by Professor Jose Lopez, the younger brother of Oscar Lopez. And he, you know, he pulled me aside one time. Well, at the beginning of the first week of class, he goes, Alamo, Alamo. Uh, he goes, he's like, You're Puerto Rican? I'm like, Yeah. He goes, That's a very, you know, that's a very rare name and 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 uh Puerto Rico. I'm like, oh, I guess so. And then you were telling me my that you had some. My father's somebody... aunt's grandmother. Your father's aunt's grandmother is Alamo. Um, Born roughly in 1835. <laughs> yeah, I, I, it comes from, I know it, it supposedly comes from the house of Al, Al, Alacron or something like that. And it got. I mean, it's also a popular tree, so it could be a lot of different things, you know. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm about to go to El Paso on Friday tomorrow. And in El Paso, there's, you know, Alamo Mechanics, Alamo Furniture Store, Alamo Convenience Store. Everything's Alamo there. Um, but uh, so how did you get in? I mean, you, you were born in, in New York. What borough? Manhattan, El Barrio. Wow. Spanish Harlem, East Harlem. Yep. that's. I was really Puerto Rican then, apparently, whatever that means. <laughs> and your, your parents had been there for, your family's been there for how long? Had been there for how long? My parents moved to the to New York in the 60s. No, well, that's not true. My mother did. My father probably, I want to say, in the 50s. And what's funny is that they met in New York. He lived in the Bronx. She lived in Brooklyn. They used to tell this story about when they were courting. My father would take a bicycle and bicycle ride down from Bronx to Brooklyn. I know my father, he probably just took the, tr the train, but then got out and perpetrated like he rode the whole way, but still, right, right. <laughs> you know, and yeah, they were, yeah, and they were married and I'm the youngest of three. So yeah, by that point, they were well established. <laughs> I'm the oldest of three. Uh, my, my grandparents, my Puerto Rican, I'm half Honduran, half, half uh, Puerto Rican. Uh, my, my Puerto Rican grandparents are from Vega Baja. They came to Chicago in the late 50s mid 50s uh um, oh, so they were like among the pioneers like the marine tiger population ish so yeah group. something like that i mean and then they had my dad in in 59 60 um and so my mom's from honduras obviously but i, I you know I, I don't know any of the really the family in puerto rico um i'm kind of estranged from my dad me, my, me and my dad talk now but it's not uh substantive you know it's just like hey you know happy birthday happy I say happy Father's Day, but he's been out of my life for for decades now. And now that he's trying to get back in, you know, he's found Jesus and whatever. Um, I, 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 you know, Jesus, I just is that another son of his? What's up? No, Jesus is that another son of his? <laughs> no, I'm you know, and his name's Hector Luis Alamo, and I'm Hector Luis Alamo Jr. So that always rubbed me the wrong way. Like, how are you going to give somebody your name, and I and look then, like him, and then just dip, you know? Um, Do you have any Garinagu in your family, in your mother's side? Garifuna. Garifuna? I mean, no, no. Uh, they're they're white and and and, and Mayan. Um, <laughs> I, I have British on my on my Honduran side. My my grand my Honduran grandmother's grandfather was Brooks from London <laughs> by way of New York. 
And look, everybody got busy in the Caribbean. Well, of course, it's hot, you know, it's scantily, hot. They weren't scantily wearing much clad clothing. women, you know. No, we got televisores. So, you know, what else can you do? Exactly. Um, but uh, what was I going to say? But yeah, I mean, he, I was just talking to my brother about this the other day, about my dad. Like, you know, I, I, I've left the door open for him to like kind of come back into our lives, but he hasn't really done anything with that. So it's like, what, what do I need these like, you know, occasional texts on holidays for you know are you like telling him like really i want you in my life or are you just dropping hints because Bruh, we, made flew, we flew him out to vegas you know my brother was out here my my sister was out here we flew him out to vegas he had the great greatest time of his life probably and then after what that he an great invitation <laughs> and then yeah and then you know he's just, maybe he's just one of these people who's just you know and i understand that as somebody who's who, who, i'm not gonna have kids of my own i've never wanted them and i i don't want them um, maybe he's one of these people. Just... Father now, so you kind of have one. Yeah, but you know, her father's a very much a part of her life as much as he can be, as much as she allows it. Um, and so being a stepfather is the greatest role for me because, <laughs> you know, I get to see, you know, I get to play the father. I taught her, I taught her how to count. I taught her how to read. I taught her. I teach her stuff about, you know, I help her with her homework. I'm the nerd, right? I'm the resident nerd in the family. So I teach her, I I'm help her with homework. I'm teaching her how to drive. Uh, but then, you know, you know, it sounds, it sounds terrible to say, you know, I'm not um, maybe emotionally equipped to be a father. And so, uh, you know, whatever. What does that mean? What does that what mean? What does that mean? Because if you're emotionally equipped to be a stepfather and you've been, you've been in your stepdaughter's life for a very long time since you're teaching her how to count. Right. What does that mean? Um, if you're emotionally equipped to be a stepfather, then you're kind of emotionally equipped to be a father, save for, I don't know, paying child support and or taxes. I mean, <laughs> let's put it this way. The, I'm a, f I'm the stepfather. I am is better than the father that my father was. Do you know what I mean? So in that but way, you're goal. right. Right. In that way, That's you're the right. Goal, right. That should right. always be the goal. Even if right. you're the best father in the world, you want to be a better father than your father. Right. But I feel like you know, there's three of us. You know, there's there's her dad, my her mom, and then me. And so there's you know, there's not as much onus on me to. I'm, I can be more of her friend, and you know, and that's kind of. And it, it didn't work out in the beginning. It didn't work out when, when she was a kid. She hated me, right? She wanted her parents to get back together. She saw me as the the interloper, right? And and now that she's passed, you know, now she's a teenager. Now she understands me. Now, like, you know, I'm not good with kids. And so I'm better with adults. And now that she's becoming an adult, we're becoming way closer, right? And so... Right. Um, maybe I, what I mean by that is that I'm not emotionally equipped to be a father. Maybe I mean that... I'm not emotionally equipped to be the kind of father that I thought father should. I don't know what a father does. Well, I still want to change diapers. Just tell the truth. Yeah, um, <laughs> well, no, like even my wife, my wife says she doesn't want another kid. Right. And she says, you know, cause it's, it's, you have, we're, we're very self-centered in our careers, her, her and hers and her and mine, me and mine. And, um, and I, you know, maybe my my dad is self centered. Maybe my mom is self centered. Maybe that's why I had the childhood that I had. But so I don't want to, I you know, I don't know. I just don't have that, you know, knowing how to like. Um, now I'm not like, shaming you, mind you. No, 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 not yeah, at all, yeah. not at all. I mean, this because is it's can, what it is. You can man. decide you don't want to be a parent, and that's perfectly valid and fine. And I For get sure. that. That's cool. You know, and sure. that's not everybody's journey. Just like it's not everybody's journey to have multiple kids, you know? Right. So, right. like, it's whatever you do is fine. If you are in that place where you're like, I don't see myself doing that, either right now or for the foreseeable future, right. that's perfectly fine. And that, that's kind of why I wanted to bring you on because, you know, we can talk about your, your family situation, but, like, you, I'm trying, like, you're very, you are very healthy in the way you, you know, we talked about, We've been talking about body positivity, right? And mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. and you're very um, enlightened in that way, right? Uh, in 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 love and in 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 self love and in love of loving of others. You have a very mixed family, and it looks like it's all love. I mean, tell tell as much as you want. I don't know what you want to tell, but 
you know, I think it's imp- <laughs> I think it's important for for uh, you know we, we don't have to say any names, obviously, but I think it's important. You're you are a out of everybody that I'm friends with. You are one of the most unique people in that sense, and in in a great way, in a positive way. I think most well, people are are are. I hate I hate um, traditions. I hate uh, you know. You're you're finding you're you're making your own path in 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 a, in and in love and in in all kinds of things. And I'm trying to like kind of break away from my Catholicism and whatever fucking bullshit got drilled into me when i was a kid so the shame the guilt the shame the shame yeah um no i mean yeah i think well let's see where do i start well um for one thing i am a i'm also a step dad we have that in common right i have a step dad to three kids so yeah i'm a father of four now i went from father of zero to a father of four in less than a year so i like to say i, I you know me converti de, de papi a father you know, I was like, I was like, I was no longer that puppy anymore. I was a father for real. Um, and one of them was, one of them was a teen. It still is a teen because he just turned 18. Yeah. Um, and just graduated high school. And um, Congratulations. yeah, no, thank you. Thank you. We're, trust me, we're happy that it happened because he had a, how do I put it? I don't want to say traumatic, but he had a turbulent um, teen age year, teenage years. Um, he had those, but, um, the other two were younger. Yeah. Shout out to all the kids that are going through, you know, high schoolers that are high school was a fucking bitch for anybody. Right. But imagine going through a pandemic and a Trump fucking administration. Jesus. Okay. So my youngest is turning three in a couple of months. So the fact that he spent a year basically not really socializing yeah, with any other kids outside of his siblings, like he, so it's like it's it's really weird, you know, and it's what it is. I also discovered something that I didn't realize until this pandemic. My mother's father, my my paternal grandmother, was a pandemic baby. What the flu mean? pandemic. Oh, and in nineteen nineteen, what was that? Nineteen twenty. Yeah, nineteen. Yeah, her birth her birth date was great because it's nine nine nineteen nineteen. Easy to remember, <laughs> right? Yeah. You know, and I just created this just in case I, you know, there's a name. No, I'll just be like, so then I was talking with, can you see it? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, name redacted for the listeners. Uh, yeah, it's a sign that says name redacted. Um, yeah, so I, well, let's see, because you asked me a bunch of different things. So I'm trying to see if I can get them in order. So it's something I don't think I've ever said officially, so I will say it officially for Latinish. Uh, <laughs> Why haven't you said it officially before you say it? Well, because you talk, you know, you talk about guilt. You talk about, um, I mean, I've told friends obviously, but you talk about guilt. You talk about shame, and you talk about being different and being yeah. the other. And I'm already like so many others. I'm like the other of the yeah. other of the right. other. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I'm also a brown skin Puerto Rican man. And so, for example, when I started out in acting with regards to like trying to go for roles, I wasn't black enough for black folks. I wasn't Latino enough for Latino folks. Right. Or Hispanic, because I believe that may have been the term back then. (laughs) And I definitely wasn't white enough for white folks. Right. And so, I I have long always known that I was part of the other, yeah. whatever that was. And at the same time, it wasn't necessarily a bad thing or a good thing. But it society just makes you thing. feel bad about it. Right. I thought it was like, to sound all corny, I thought it was my superpower. You know, I thought I was special, you know? But, you know, then the society said, no, you're not. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, it wound up being, you know, it, it made me unique, whatever that means. You know, I think we all have our uniqueness. No, you it's know? great to be unique. I mean, there's just such a pressure, especially with social media, to conform, to do what everybody else is doing. We're all watching each other. TikTok is a great prime example, right? All these people, a challenge comes along, and then you see endless videos of people doing the same thing, the same. Like, why do you think that 
your version is way different than anybody else's. Do something completely different. Make up something your own. Right. You know, and so you try to, you know, you try to do that. But a lot of times you are dissuaded from it. And I know what it's like to fit in, you know, per se. And it's like, you, you, only, you don't only get that from, say, society at large. You also get that from within your own family. Preach. Because I have curly hair. You know, and it's a beautiful texture. I don't know where it is on the curly hair change because at least you still got yours, man. It changes, it changes. Well, you know, you got a great shaped head, so it's good. Yeah, very photogenic. Oh, but I will say, growing up, like my hair was always cut really short. I called it the Puerto Rican afro, the short DA. You know, and I didn't know my mother had curly hair until I was maybe a teen, because my mom would wash her hair below dry it before she'd even leave the bathroom. So one time I saw her hair was wet and it was, it was like, your hair's curly? Wow, I've been living a lie. <laughs> because my father has curly hair, obviously. And, but I didn't realize my mom did too. She didn't want to see, she didn't want her own son to see that she had curly hair? It was, I mean, I can't really speak for her now, especially since she's no longer among the living. But I don't, I remember when I first grew out my hair, because he used to have long hair. She used to hate it when it was big and curly. But if I went to the to the salon or whatever and had it blow dried straight, oh, it looked really good. <laughs> she loved that. Yeah. You know, and for me, I was I never thought of it as me trying to pass be white, you know, trying to be white. It was like me trying to be Taino. <laughs> you know, it was just that, you know, and but it's that whole good hair, bad hair, bello model, bello bueno like thing. And the colorism thing is also with a thing because my father was dark skinned. I'm darker than both my parents, but um, my father was what you would would call, I guess, high yellow or a little darker than that. My mother was light skinned, olive tone, you know. But for my father's father, she was apparently too, like, she was not light enough for my father. He didn't like her for that reason, which is funny because my father's father was so black, he was blue. Yeah, I had a dark. You know I mean? My my father's father was dark. I'm about. I might be a little darker than my dad. We're about the same, but I'm the dark. I'm the oldest, and I'm also the darkest kid. You know. Oh, my yeah, brothers, my yeah. brothers, you know. Sandy I just thought Brown. it was all that Vegas sun. No, no. Well, yeah. I thought you would look like Ricky Martin. You know, I, when, if you spend a, you know time in the up north, you know. I just no. I just get pale in December. I just get real pale, but I'm still brown. You know, but uh. Claro. My, my my sister's white. My my mom is kind of white. You know, a little hint of dulce de leche. My sister is lighter skin. My my brother has my skin tone. So it's yeah. And I'm used to that being in the yeah. so. But like when you see all these like mixed race families or people who have adopted people of different races, that I thought was my norm. That was the norm growing up. Right. I grew up thinking. <laughs> I grew up thinking everybody there was white and black. Right. And that every, like, my mom was white and she spoke Spanish, and my father was black and he spoke Spanish, and everybody spoke English and Spanish. I was really, really surprised when our black neighbors across the way did not speak Spanish. And I, I realized, oh, we're the, we're, no, we're not the norm. We're not the norm at all. Yeah. Because my, my sister had, has a name, Lourdes. That's one of her names, because we have multiple names sometimes. Um, one of her names, but like, they would call her Lute. Lute. Like couldn't pronounce it. And I was like, oh, you're not, you don't speak Spanish? It was like <laughs> shocking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I thought everybody did. Right. You know, and so, yeah, there's that. Um, the, speaking of which, my, when I was looking up my family tree, it was funny to see my grandfather's family, who are black. They are black. Were listed once as negro and then 10 years later listed as mulatto. Yeah. Which made me think, did somebody get paid off? I don't know. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. Well, that's what, like, uh, but it, right? Batantes' family did that, right? I mean, he was, he had to, like, his dad petitioned in Spain, right? Had to petition Spain to, like, list him not as black. Look at, look at El Chivo from the Dominican Republic, who, um, the Trujillo. Like, he's the hate, hates, hates, like, the Haitians. And he, but mind you, he relaxed his hair. Yeah. His he grandmother was like Hitler, right? Hitler was like, Hitler's his grandmother super- made him black. Yeah. 
<laughs> now, mind you, in the U.S., you have the whole one drop rule where, like, if you have one drop of black, you black. Yeah. But in Latin America, you, the one drop rule is if you got one one drop of white, you white. You, well, you're coming after Demi Lovato because she's like, you know, I, she took a DNA test and she's one percent African. And then there's that picture of her in like African well, garb. But isn't everybody one at least one percent African? Everybody's at least one percent African. We come from Africa. Everybody. Like, where's where we, the oldest bones come from Africa? We're from, Does we're that African mean I want everybody species. in a daishiki? No. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, me, you know, I'm I'm African. You know, obviously we're African, but I'm I wouldn't wear a dashiki because it's just not. You know, there's it's just not part of. It's just weird. I mean, she's gonna catch flag for it, and I think she should. You know, like, but she's going through it's some like, stuff. You're she's trying too hard. Stuff, though. She's it's like you're trying stuff. too hard sometimes. It's like the mayor of New York City, um, Bill de Blasio, who right. happens to be married to an African-American woman and they have beautiful mixed children. But he went to an event in Washington Heights, which is a traditionally Dominican neighborhood. And he was like, que lo que? which is a Dominican greeting. And you're like, you're trying too hard. Yeah, especially when his policies don't do anything for Dominicans in New York, right? <laughs> it's like somebody wants to, you know, somebody wants like to be remembered well by, you know, certain demographics. You know, that it, it's what it is. Um, of course, we're going to go off and then come back into the topic. I'm going to find my way back to the topic. Trust me. Um, That's the way the podcast goes, man. I don't, you know, it's not an interview. It's a, it's a conversation. That's how conversations go. You know? You're going to tell me about, you're going to all tell us about your wonderful, beautiful, loving family yes um <laughs> so there's been some changes since we've left you know since we like first met but you don't have to give me too many details you're, you're, no no tell, no, tell no. Everybody so, yeah, basically because, the because, I, because there's a part of me that wants to tell you that you know i'm no longer affiliated with right okay <laughs> name redacted um in that way but i will say this i Wow, it's so funny to say out loud. Because here's the thing. It's people, there's a, as much as there's like, um, hatred or just like discrimination against people of different genders or different, right. um, different um, non sexual orientations right? or different sexual orientations for that matter. Like, there's one that that's different from that, and I'm not comparing myself to those to that those two things, but um, that st they, people still don't understand because a lot of people don't either know about it or if they do well, say the word, say the word, so we can start talking about it. Polyamory, right? Oh, I'm polyamorous. Yes. Um, and I, I I think polyamory, you know, for a while I. I we've talked about this and you asked me about yeah. my polyamory and you're like, why, why don't you practice it? And I told you because it's not easy to practice it in your in my everyday life and to practice it would drastically change my life. And the people that I care about are not down with it. You know, they don't understand it. And, and to they be think fair, I'm just being like, a fucking I don't, practice it, I don't practice it like that either. You know what I mean? I don't at least not any time since my latest relationship, but right. I mean, and there's varying forms of polyamory because there's something called polyfidelity, you know, which is your, if you're in a multiple group relationship, multiple party relationships, so like three or four, you know, then you, you close the relationship between the three or four of you. And then that's what that is. Which is weird that there's all these terms for it because it's just love, right? Everybody's love is different and there's infinite ways of loving, right? That's basically the moral of the story. There is no, yeah, there's, there's like, there's no one way to do most things, you know, there's like, live your life. there's yeah. no one way to love. I mean, and there's multiple ways of loving, like, you know, like, for example, Hector, Louis, I can love you in a deep, intense way that right. has nothing to do with sex. Right. You know, or you can and love two like, people that, and it has something to do with sex, but you love them differently for different reasons. And you get something different out of both of those relationships. And sometimes it can be like what they call a V, you know, where the two people love the same person, or it could be a full closed triangle, you know, where it's just all the way around. And it could and be quadrilaterals. It could be different LGBT. polygons. You know, it could be poly. They, call it, they say polycule, which is a cute word too, like a molecule. Poly oh, polycule. <laughs> I knew your your nerdy ass would love that. That's um, good. Um, but yeah. No, but I think poly belongs in LGBT because 
even among LGBT, if you're poly, you're looked down upon. You're like, well, no, because fidelity is still the norm, even even within LGBT, right? You'd be surprised. Um, but I understand what you're saying. And that's the thing. It's hard because then you make the umbrella really, really large right. because there are because there's also the misconception that people who are polyamorous are also swingers. And that's that's not right. necessarily the case. Right. But there's also there's I mean, there's heterosexual polyamorous people. There right. are bisexual polyamorous people. Right. There are, you know, pan, whatever. There's also um, homosexual polyamorous people. So and then there's mixtures. So, you know, you really it's kind of hard to put that under the the alphabet soup, as I like tend to call it, you know, um, just because. Um, but I understand why people would want to, I don't know, like force it in there, you know? I feel like the difference is with regard, like as for right now, the LGBTQIA, um, and even A is kind of weird because asexual, because then you then you start, is it about sex? Is it not about sex? But One of the first then, guests know. I've had was is an asexual person. Uh, shout out to Luciano. Uh, you know, and I've seen new names like ace for asexual and aro for aromantic, which I found interesting. But then, you know, I keep thinking that tends to, right, as it currently is, is for gender, I mean, excuse me, for, well, gender identity for trans and definitely for sexual orientation so this is more of a romantic is it romantic well a relationship orientation that's the best way to put it so where does that fit in you know what i mean where does that go right i mean and it's I, just, I honestly don't have the answer well there there isn't one really right because it's your situation is going to be unique to somebody else right to anybody yeah, else and, and you know and the and the first time i had heard about polyamory <laughs> dare I say this, but it's kind of funny. Was my friend was a performer and he was performing at a Polly Amherst Pride event in Central Park in New York years ago. It was the first time with Polly Amherst, and then I realized because I didn't really know what it was. Right. And then I was like, oh, back in my day, we used to call that being a hoe. Right. You know, but <laughs> you know, and I and that's not necessarily what it is. Now, mind you, you could be a hoe. I'm all about, you know, be a hoe. If you want to be too. a hoe, be a hoe. I, I know women who are, you know, I grew up with women. They were my be- they were my best friends, and they were, you know, we used the word slut, but we used it with pride, right? Um, right. You know, I was a male slut, and they were female sluts, and they and they were they they didn't hide it, which I really admired and I really encouraged because it's like, you know, if a guy sluttiness knows no gender. Yeah, because if a guy, you know, because all the guys were, you know, we were fucking all these girls, and we were like the kings of the school. But then if the girls we were hanging out with, oh, they're they're the bad ones. No, they're just doing. They they own their fucking genitalia the same way we own ours, right? So yeah, I was raised by and around a lot of strong women, and so it, I always found it weird and strange and odd. Like, why is the double standard? Like, why is that the case? You know, and why can't if a woman wanted to? have sex with as many people as you want right what you know as long as you're not hurting nobody as long as you're not hurting yourself right why not right because you know i have stories uh you know, well, you know i know men, i know men who are male sluts and they're hurting themselves they're not doing it they're they're doing it and they don't really want to be doing it you know Th- that's different than being you know owning it and you wanting to do it but like, to say that you know there's, there's this idea that women don't know how to protect themselves or care for themselves. And anything a man does is not harming himself. He's so wise that he can't do anything that harms himself, which is bullshit. That's also, yeah, that's also bullshit. Yes. Yeah. I mean, so I have no, I like, it's cool. Like if that, I think of it this way. Um, If you are happy with what you're doing, whether that is be, you know, being, um, having sex with multiple people at a time or at the same time, you know what I mean? I, you know, I'm, I don't care. It's not my business. It, I don't mind. I mean, unless I'm one of the partners, then maybe I should like want to know more, but you know, if you want to do that, if you want to be asexual, if you want to just be, follow the quote, quote unquote norm and just be, you know, monogamous, that's fine too. That is right. perfect. If you want to be a virgin till marriage. Okay. But I'm not one to try to judge you on that because why I wouldn't want to be judged on my myself. So right. why would I, you know, 
exactly. Why would I want to judge you? Yeah, I mean, I think that's why I'm not judgmental in that way. You know, like I have opinions of things, but at the end of the day, anybody can do it. A lot of opinions on things. Well, it's just how my mind works, right? Um, no, it's good. It's good. But I don't, I don't judge. Meaning, like you shouldn't do that. You blah blah blah. Like I have an opinion on it, but I'm so weird that I wouldn't want anybody to tell me that I shouldn't do a, X, Y, and Z, right? It's like I know people in like who who are in the kink scene or they they're in the leather scene. It's like there may be things I don't understand, but it doesn't mean I should judge it. Yeah, you know what I mean. It doesn't mean I should like look down upon it. Right. Well, like, that's old school, right? Whatever. I shouldn't, whatever. Fear, it. I shouldn't fear it. That's you know, because that's where it's coming from. It's coming from a place of fear. Fear, fear. Yeah. I mean, what and, is this? And like, I want to. I don't want to operate out of a out of fear. I want to operate out of love. I think it's almost FOMO, right? Like when somebody sees somebody else doing like having like you know, say they're into kink or they're polyamorous or whatever, and you're living this heteronormative life. And you you love you love your heteronormative life, but then you see these people having fun, having this sexual expo- you know, sexual life. You have a FOMO. Maybe these people have a FOMO of like, am I doing it wrong? Am I boring sexually? And so instead of, uh, instead of uh, you know, what is the word? You know, instead of following or you know wondering about that, they say no, they must be doing it wrong. Whatever I do is right. They're doing it wrong. And so persecuting, persecuting, right? Like it's just, it, it might just be fear because we're saying it's fear, right? So fear of what, um, you can, why, why would you be afraid of your neighbors are doing whatever the fuck in their bedroom? It has to be fear. Of, it has to be FOMO. It has to be like, am I, is my sexual life wrong? Is it boring? Is it blah, blah, blah. No. And it's, and it's funny because we talked about that and like fear and all this other stuff. It's like, cause you also brought up body positivity and it's, it's at that moment where I'm like, you know, I've gone to nude beaches. I've gone, you know, I've been, I think the funny, one of the funniest jobs that I've ever had was being an, uh, um, an art model for college students. And it's not being nude in front of people. That's hard. It's being still <laughs> where you're just like, how do I do this? And, you know, and it's when I realized, because I grew up really, really skinny and I grew up, you know, being feeling shamed and or bullied because of that, you know? And then I, you know, I just felt like I didn't want to take off my shirt, yeah. you know, ever, you know? And so I keep thinking now, like look at all the times I could have missed out on things because of whatever, you know? Yeah. But I said, I don't like this about myself. I don't like that. I don't like what I look like. What do I do about that? And, you know, that's when I started throwing myself, putting myself out there, basically, and taking all those things, breaking out of my comfort zones, you know, by taking that job as an artist model, as being photographed by, you know, by um, in the nude for like photographers or those kinds of things or going to a nude beach because and then I was like, OK, I didn't die. Nobody died. Right. I'm OK. Yeah. This is fine. And I like my body. I mean, I I, re- I was telling you, I recently gained the quarantine 19, you know, you know, from like pandemic. And I started, I either lost it or rearranged it in a much more advantageous <laughs> way. <laughs> but I'm happy. I was happy with my body the whole way. You know, as I called myself, like jokingly said, it's like, I was still that sexy motherfucker. Yeah. Still was, you know, but, and I feel like everybody should love their body. You know, no matter what it does, what it doesn't do, because you talk about FOMO, life is way too short to be worrying that much you, about yourself. It's, it's so tough because, like, you know, I, I, you know, part of me, you know, allows myself to say, you know, you have a great body, you know, it's it's good, but then, you know, w- I'd be lying to you if that if the the dominant feeling I have towards my body is like, oh, these fucking love handles, I've had them forever, they're never gonna go away. Like, why can't I get a six pack? You know, like. It's never enough. Okay. It's never enough, man. Well, here's the thing then that it might help you, hopefully. Don't think of the destination. Think of the journey. Because, you know, will I have like my 29, 30 inch waist again? Probably not. Right. That's okay. Um, I I've still kind of like to that. I'm 36 boat. now. So, like, you know, it's, I'm not, it's getting harder and harder to get that goal body, right? And, and it, it 
36, I'm kind of, I'm not going to have the body that when I was 20, I dreamed of having. Right. And so you're right. I just, I just work out not even with any goal in mind. I just work out as a part of my life as something that I do to take care of myself. And you have a great body, like really, because I've seen your social media. Come on, I know you're not afraid to be shirtless. You're not, you're not afraid to be like in an avocado floaty, like in your in your bathing suit, and just by like what? Yeah, yeah. But you know, it's a lot of different things. It's it's a mostly layered thing, especially with regards to in society, fear of a penis. You know, so yeah. you men especially have like this weird thing about that. You know. And, and I'm uncircumcised. I was going to bring that up with you too. Like I'm uncircumcised. And as a kid, like I was always made to feel ashamed of even today, just jokes about being uncircumcised. Right. But now I'm like, it again, it's, it's one of those things where I know being uncircumcised is normal. Like you, everybody's born that way. You are born uncircumcised. And, and if you want, if, if I, if, you know, if I had to defend my, my I mean, those were penises anyway. If I have to, my penis was born that way. If I, if I have to un- defend it, then I will say that circumcision is really nothing more than male genital mutilation. And, you know, to, to, I would you know, agree with you on that. I would totally agree with you. A baby boy is born and you say, oh, he's perfect, but look at this bit of skin. Let's cut it off. Like, what, what's the impulse I mean, there? And here's the thing if you have circumcised penis, if you have an uncircumcised penis, they're both valid. You know what I mean? And my I wife feel, says I have a I beautiful feel, dick, so that's all I care about, right? I mean, she's the one who has to see it on the regular. So that's yeah, all but really... you know what? Even if she wasn't around, you should look at your dick and be like, it's beautiful. Yeah. Whether it's like, whether it's in the words of Robert Williams, uh, what is it? A, sna- a snail wearing a helmet or a snake wearing a sweater. Whether it's one or the other, yeah, you know, yeah. it should be fine. It should yeah. be because it's yours. You know what I mean? Now, mind you, if you want to do some changes to yourself, like right. that's something it's a personal decision, whether you want to get a nose job, whether you right. want to, you know what I mean? Whether you want to get a liposuction, that's up to you. And I'm not going to judge you either way, but know that you were valid with your love handles. You were valid before your love handles. And you, you know, what? you're not in competition with anyone else, but yourself. So yeah. why not love yourself as you are? Right. I mean, that's, that's kind of why I wanted to bring you on. Cause I, I, I wanted these words of wisdom about that. Cause that's so hard to, again, you know, I, I know I shouldn't be competing with everybody, but it's, you know, social media is, you know, the American this, way it's the American Lazy, way. fair capitalism or whatever. And is I said, that, in, you know, I said in last week in another episode that, you know, in the philosophy, there's a saying, you know, comparison is the root of unhappiness. Like as soon as you start comparing what you have, what you are to somebody else, that's the way to be unhappy because you, you, if you're going to compare yourself to anybody else, you're going to be unhappy because you're not them and they're not you, right? And so you're always going to see something that they have that you don't have. But like you're saying, you, you're not – don't compete with anybody else. Just focus on you and loving because, yourself. I mean I don't even notice, quote, unquote, your love handles. You know what I mean? And, and that's, that's the, the thing other thing. I see. That's the first thing I, my eyes go to. But, right? but, that, but the thing is we also play tricks and we always see the worst in us. Yeah. You know what I mean? One of the re- things that I learned when I was getting photographed was, or photographing myself, was just that the camera can give you an objective eye. And you go, oh, it's not as bad as I thought it was. You know what I mean? And look, you've got a great build. You do. You know, and you know what? Guess what? I will never be Hector Luis Alamo. And that's okay. Because I'm Amy Lugo. Because I'm Amy Lugo, damn it. And yeah, that's like- great. I tell myself, I'm a writer. Like, what do I want to be? Do I want to have a great body or do I want to be a great writer, be smart? Like, at the end of the day, I want to be a great writer and be smart. And so, you know, like, th- that I don't have a six-pack is because I'm at my fucking desk, you know, for hours every day. I'm reading every day, right? That that, And, you know, is there somebody who's a genius? who Maybe just, uh, Jeff Bezos looks like he has a fucking great body. And he's, I think he also gets he like 10 afford, hours. He can right. afford to do so. Right. You know what I mean? And that's that's fine for him. But you know what? Good good on him. But that's not going to serve me. Me right. comparing myself to anyone else. Right. Including the me I used to be. Right. Oof. Is not going to serve me. Yeah. You know? Because I could see Here's the funny thing. I I look at pictures of me from back then and from back then and um 
I'm really skinny. <laughs> so I'm already seeing the worst in me. But then there's a part of me that looks back and goes, you know, though, I used to have this great V, these V lines yeah. that I like to say has as become a U as of late. <laughs> but, you know, I got to stop before it becomes a W. But still, <laughs> it's still fine. It yeah. is like, I was like, if I were to go to a nude beach now, which there's not many where I live because I don't, I live in, in the mountain time zone. So there's not many beaches over the ocean per se, but if I were to find one, hell yeah, I'll get all naked. Why not? Why not work on the all over 10? You know who helped like me with that? Ten. Lizzo. Lizzo helped me with that and everything that she does, right? Like if I thought like if she can be, if she can let it all hang out quite literally and be proud of it and, and still feel sexy, then I should definitely be able to feel the same way, right? My phrase I always say is embrace your inner sexy. Yeah. Find that and embrace it because we can't function without that. And by sexy, it doesn't necessarily mean about sex, but you know, to feel like your own self love. Right. You know, just Swag. embrace your inner sexy is a great phrase. Right, right. Uh, because we all have our moments of like, ugh, uh, uh, I'm ugly, you know, and all that stuff. But we should try to minimize those and work on those feelings where we feel like we are the shit yeah. and not just shit. You know what I mean? Right. I mean, I so, I mean, because what, look at you. Look at you. You've got this amazing award winning, not yet, but I'm manifesting podcast. You know, I'm manifesting are, that shit too. Believe me. <laughs> you know, you are like smart. My, you my are like, gave you me know, those gems, you know. <laughs> there you go. We are pinned. You are opinionated. You are like, like you're, you're not, you know, you're not like doing nothing with your life. You've got, you're, you're a great That's father the way I see figure. It. I'm trying to do something. I'm trying, I'm doing, I'm doing something. You're right? leaving, you're leaving an imprint. You're leaving a legacy. You're leaving, you know, your mark. That's more important than if I've got eight packs or 10 packs or I whatever. I feel the same way. You know? I feel the same you know? way. But you try to have it all. Well, you try to do it all. to be bigger? Hell yeah. Do I want my arms to be bigger? Hell yeah. yeah. You know? I also have a pretty penis. I'm happy with yeah. that too. But if I did it, if it was shorter, you know, I'm okay. Because I blame like Michael B. Jordan because Michael B. Jordan's out here looking fucking good as hell. And, you know, and I'm like, fuck, man. You know, if only the Michael B. Jordan in the world would go away. trainers. He could afford trainers. I know, but, you know. Nobody sees the work. We they only see the product. We also can't deify. We also can't deify famous people. Yes, I agree, dude. And that's we do, right? They're royalty. They're not even royalty. They're gods. They're living. They're our mythology. And so, yeah, I mean, because you know what? They are. You know what they? They have to wipe their ass after taking a shit like the rest of us. I say it all the time. Whenever I see a hot ass girl, for, I said been saying this since high school. If I see a hot ass girl, I'm like, no matter how hot she is, J Lo. J Lo has to has taken some massive dumps in her life, right? Fucking burning yeah, I mean, you know, She could afford somebody to wipe ass, though. She could totally afford somebody just to be, like, shit cleaner. No. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, we're, we're kind of wrapping up here. We're, we're getting to the... I, dude, I knew we were going to fly through this fucking conversation. This is going to uh, be a multi-part conversation, isn't it? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, um, I wanted to ask you, like, what what is the hardest part about... Like, for me, like... You know, I've kind of put my polyamory in a drawer because, again, it's not convenient. And, and that, that sounds terrible to say, but, you know, again, I'm like somebody who's living a closeted life because, in a way, people don't understand. People think that, like, polyamory is that I fall in love with anybody. That's not true, right? No. You f falling in love is, is spe specific, right? You fall in love with, for particular reasons. I fall in love with people who aren't particularly attractive, that I'm not even particularly physically attracted to, and that... I, I fall in love with them or I have fallen in love with, with them. And then the, and then the sexual comes cause I'm a, am I, I'm, I'm, I'm an affectionate person. I'm a sexual person. So if I love you, then some, you know, the, the, the sexual part develops. Sometimes I've had polyamorous relationships for years where there's no sex, there's no kissing or anything. We're just talking. Right. And there's, and they, I give Sometimes them Sometimes you could have like advice. these relationships with people whose minds you were like in love with. Uh, I fall in love with their mind. With. I fall in love with their energy. I fall in love with their their vibe, their, their way of looking at the world. You know, and then it's got. Then you realize is that I mean, is that cheating? Then quote unquote cheating. My, you know, my wife, then girlfriend, said it was right. She said, you know, we had an open, we had an open relationship, an open marriage for a while, and she's like, you know, 
The rule is that you can just have sex with people. No relationship. No talking to them. No getting to know them. Just sex. And I'm like, and any guy listening to this or watching this is like, that's perfect, right? Just hooking up with bitches at the fucking club. I'm not into that. Right. I'm not into that. Not I want to... I talk. I, I like to sit down with a girl and talk. I don't like going to loud clubs. I want to go to a bar, go to a cafe, sit and talk with you for hours, and you know, and get to know you and and have this, you know, before you indiscriminately grope her and put it on her or whatever. You know, right, I'm not that way. And so, you know, we, I I think we, we still technically have an open marriage, but I'm not looking to go. And I live in Vegas, so I could go and hook up with some random girl, but it's not my a thing. Show it's not girl. My thing. <laughs> it's not what I'm interested in, you know? And so, and she thinks- I mean, I've had anonymous sex. It's cute, yeah. but it's not necessarily it. I've had plenty of anonymous sex, but like, it's not my memorable, it's not what I remember in my life. Oh my gosh, my partner asked me like, so how many people have you slept with? And it's like, I am not answering that question. You can't. You just can't. Right? I, because I feel like, because I feel like that's a setup. <laughs> There's a fight happening, and you just no, we're not doing that. And, the other and thing here's the thing: like, whether your answer is zero, whether your answer is one, whether your answer is two hundred or more or a thousand or whatever, who cares? Right? Who cares? I, I'm with you, but most people aren't. Right? I've had Even, I've had practice. That's all I'm saying. I've had practice. Yeah, I'm like, don't you like my stroke? Where do you think I got it from? I wasn't born with a stroke, right? You got practice makes perfect, right? Um. And and that's how I and that's how our my marriage is so strong because I've been in a lot of romantic relationships where I was actually trying to get to know people, right? So I've gotten to know a lot of different women. I've gotten to be in a lot of different relationships. And that even being in a relationship takes practice, right? Um it takes so work. I tell my wife all the time, if you you know, if you if you like me now, then you gotta accept all the fucking what you think is dirt, all the dirt that I did, because it made me this this fine specimen that you're in love and with. And don't and don't shame it. And right. don't shame it. I mean, you don't have to like it, but don't shame it. Don't, you know, you have to accept that it, it happened, it was there. Right. And the other thing is that, you know, part of the open marriage rule was that is was we we haven't I've shelved it for so long, I don't even know if we still have an open marriage, but um <laughs> you know, she wanted to know every time I hooked up, she wanted to know like all the details. And I'm just not like that. You know, I don't like, you know, I like yeah, to That's amazing though. Yeah. That's course. amazing. Of course. But because, you know, I've heard the I don't want to hear it or I got to be part of it or, you know, like you said, you fucking yes, relationship no right. or it can't be in this city. It's got to be elsewhere. Like if you're on like if you're on a business trip, I don't care. But, you know, those kind of things. And right. in all those examples. Well, that's how I am. Like, if she communication is guy, key. Open and honest communication is key. Right. And that's kind, of why we don't, that's kind of why we don't have the open marriage because I don't want to communicate those things. Because, you know, like, if she, she's, she's fine to hook up with another guy, but I don't want to, I'm just, maybe it's the, the Catholic. Wait, she said, wait, say that again? Like, what did you could, say? She could hook up with other guys if she wants, okay. right? Whatever's whatever's good for good for the gander is good for the goose, right? right? That's what I believe. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so whatever I'm willing to do, from she's she's able to do, right? And she owns her own body, first of all. Like even if I she, if I didn't allow her to, what does that mean, right? She can do whatever the fuck she wants with her body. I don't want to know about it, right? The only thing I want to know is, do you still love me? Do you want to be with me? Fine. Then I don't care what you do, right? As long as you're not leaving me high and dry, like I'm here with a fucking hard dick and you're out fucking somebody else, that's different. And she feels the same way, right? Take care of my needs. You know, don't be, you know, fucking pleasuring the whole city and I'm over here fucking dry as a bone. Um, yeah. Right. But, I, you know, I don't, I, I'm not the kind of, I, I couldn't get past the idea of like going out, hooking with a girl and then coming back home and telling her all the details. I just... I wish I was. Unless, unless, Hector Luis, I can't speak for her, but maybe that is a turn on for her. And maybe that'll lead, like, that is the foreplay that will lead to more sex with the missus. Now, if she told me that, then, I, yeah, I would be open to it. But I'm, you know, I'm <laughs> I'm afraid she's looking for reasons. She's also a very jealous person. She was very and that's And that's fine. And that's, I mean, not fine, but that's what it is. And that's what it is. That's very common. I mean, of you know the word compression? Compression? Compersion, C-O-M-P-E-R-S-I-O-N. It means being happy at 
someone else's happiness or your your lover's happiness, yeah. which is kind of the opposite of jealousy. Right. And, you know, polyamorous people get jealous too. You know, it's not of like, course. ooh, you know, we're unfeeling. But it's um, it's like you have to lean toward compersion. Like, did you have a good time? Did he treat you right? Did you have, you know, was it hot? Are you happy? Okay, what do you want for dinner? You know, that kind of thing. And maybe you I'm know, the jealous one. Maybe because I'm not willing to hear her details. Maybe I'm actually the jealous one. Well, here's the thing. And how long have you been with her? About to be 10 years married next February. We've been together for about 12, 13 years. Okay. You're doing something right, right? So if she were to go off with another guy, that guy, so put in your words, that guy don't have your stroke. Yeah, that's what I tell myself. And if she decides to go off and decides she's going to leave you, for this person, which is yeah. the big fear. Yeah. And yeah, your relationship wasn't as strong as it, you yeah, know, that's what I think as right. you thought it was. That's why I don't, that's why I don't block her from doing whatever she wants to do with other guys. Cause like, she's not a bird that I can just catch. And like, I, what, what turns me on is that I know she's free to do whatever she wants. So her being here means she's choosing me. Right. Even if she goes and does, takes a little break with somebody else, you know, even if he's a, if he has a better stroke than me, bigger dick, every whatever, I still think like, no, what I give her in the relationship, she cannot replace. That's and that's what I focus on. People conflate sex with love. Yes. With devotion. Yes. And, who and cares polyamorous people understand that I think more than anybody. I think we're a lot more honest about that. You know, and who cares if like, another guy's bigger dick than you? You know, because right. you know what? He may not know how to fuck. Right. Right. You know, and well, maybe he does. Maybe he knows how to fuck. And too, a lot like... of women tell me that a lot of women, it's not the size that matters, it's the girth. But still, it's how you use it, and, too. Yeah, that too. The, 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 the stroke, too. And also, like, I have a friend who is very proud. He's like, my penis is six inches long. That's perfect for anal. And I'm just like, well, I'm glad you, I'm glad you found your way. You yeah. know, the yeah. average, I look, look, Google it. The average size, penis size is 5.1 inches. So, so there are guys who are like, I'm small, I'm small. And then you, you know, they tell you what it is. It's just like, you're actually above average. Yeah. So take that with you. You know what I mean? Yeah. And even if you had a three inch penis, work it out. You can work it out. You can, you could have tongue, your tongue, you could have fingers. You, you know, there are people who have like small pe- men who have small penises or people who have penises who are in long-term relationships because they know what to do. Right. Or they've learned a workaround or whatever. Yeah. Or work with yeah. them or they had, you know, we were working with what they were working with. Would you ever be it's, like a sex counselor? You, you'd be a great sex counselor. Well, thank you. Thank you. I've known, I know a couple, I know a few, and I'm like, I'm not trying to impede on their territory per se, but but I still feel like I have a lot to learn. You know, we could talk about many different, many different sexual things as well, whether it is like... I don't believe in experts. I don't believe in anybody who calls themselves an expert because an expert is somebody who has stopped learning new things because they think they they know everything there is to know. You should always be a student of anything. I agree. And thank you. Um... I used to, because I grew up like you, Catholic, and so there was always that shame and that guilt. And, you know, I was barely out of high school. I graduated high school a virgin. I know this for, <laughs> I know it was like, I was barely out when I, like, lost the virginity, whatever that means. You know, I fucked for the first time. <laughs> and I feel like I've caught up, <laughs> whatever that means. But I... What had wound up having enough experiences in my life to know what I like, know what I don't like. Exactly. Know what, hmm, maybe I could try that. Maybe I shouldn't try that. And you know what? I have respect for people who try new things and then go, no, Me never too. mind. Right. It's like, I know, I know some guys who are like, oh, I tried, I tried like getting with a guy and I just didn't know what to do with the penis. So whatever. Right. I just, I tried it wasn't for me. Right. Good. That is right. so honest. And that is so against the damn, like, not patriarchy, against the whole 
um, what am I looking for? Toxic masculinity that's out there. Right. That's another thing we have to fight, you know? Yeah. No, I mean, I've never been, a, I've never been a tr- sexually, physically attracted to a man, but I also realize that I'm kind of effeminate in a way, you know, when I'm around menly, whatever manly that men. means, whatever that means, right? Whatever that means. Right. But you know, I'm, like I said, I was raised by all women, right? My mom, my, my aunts and my grandma and my girl cousins, they raised me. Right. So, uh, look, I say this for all the love in the world. If you were to get with guys, you'd be the only hoe. And I say that with love in the world. Well, no, no judgment, but you, you, you would stay fucking. How do you know? You what, do you, what, do you mean? what do you mean? You're a good looking dude. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No, I mean. Gay guys love me, right? They love me because, especially because I got a big ass. And Rosie was always telling me, like, you know, people staring at my ass. But um, you can make an entrance by leaving the room. I get it. And 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 the way I act, you know, like again, the way I'm saying is like, you know, the way I act, people think, you know, I set up people's gaydar, right? But you know, um, but yeah, I, any, I don't mean I don't see you as gay per se, but I mean. I don't know what that means. I mean, I feel like there's such a big, also with that, there's a big spectrum of things. You know what I mean? Right. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like we need to get rid of labels period. Right. When it comes to love and sex and how people get together, because you, you I don't care how many cubby holes you invent. It's not enough. It's infinite. It's a spectrum. So get rid of the labels. And there's so many people that I know that started their lives heteros- in a heterosexual life. And all of a sudden they went past certain age and then they be, like they had a same sex relationship. What are you talking about? And you talked about De Blasio. De Blasio's wife was lesbian before, right? For a long time. Mm-hmm. And now she, mm-hmm. she's married to De Blasio. So. Right. And so, and that's also perfectly valid. You know what I mean? It's right. like people are too scared of that, though. People were really scared of that. People were scared of, you mean things can change? Right. Right. You know? And some things won't change, and some things are more fluid. The whole idea of like sexual fluidity or gender identity fluidity, that makes sense for me. I, I see that. Yes, yes. You know, yeah. I get it now. Like I didn't get it growing up because I didn't understand it and I was never fed it. But once I see it, I'm like, okay, I see that. So I'm trying to normalize, oh, my pronouns are, what are your pronouns? And it's not preferred pronouns, it's pronouns. You know what I mean? kind of like saying gay marriage or just marriage yeah. i mean i you know i i i like the whole pronoun thing it's i i don't care what anybody what they refer to me he she it i don't care um throw and, my name right in the check we're good exactly right just call me by my name right um okay Lil nas x <laughs> but no like i think the moral of the story the moral of this conversation is that people are the way to be unhappy is to force your life into these prepackaged prescriptions of what society, even if they say, okay, oh, you have to choose. Are you going to be gay, lesbian, bi, trans, poly? You know, they want to put you in these little boxes, and that's the fastest and best way to be unhappy, is to try to fit, all, put yourself in a box and then never people, leave that box. All I would tell people is don't hurt anybody else. Yes. Take care of you, right. whatever that means. To quote William Shakespeare, there's nothing good or bad. Only thinking makes it so. Ooh. Yes. Where's that from? That's, you know? Which one is that? Hamlet. Hamlet? Oh, Hamlet says it. And that's it. Just do you. Be happy with you. Love you. Love yourself first. You can't love anybody else unless you love yourself first. Ooh. Otherwise, don't try to be looking for what you think you're lacking Ooh. in a relationship. How many Don't. people are doing that? How many people are doing that? Doomed to failure every time. Yeah. Because I feel like we are attracted oftentimes to pe- people who are just like us or people who, who we think have what we lack. We think we lack. Yeah. The thing I can't stand is that damn movie, um, Jerry Maguire. You complete me. Yeah, yeah. Fuck no, bullshit. Yeah, no, yeah, no. yeah. How about this? How about this? I was complete on my own, even in my incompleteness. Right. right. Well, How the about better this? half, the whole my better half. Are, do you How feel like half this? a person? I'm not half a person. I'm a whole person. How about this? You compliment me. There you go. You're good by yourself. I'm good by myself. Together we're golden. 
That's exactly how everybody wants to know how my, my marriage works. You know, me and me and my wife are a lot alike and then very different. And it's yin and yang, man. We 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 mesh well, you know. Um, but you know, I think we should leave it there, man. <laughs> We're gonna. I like it. I like it. Explode people's <laughs> heads. But thank thank you for coming on, man. I'll let everybody know where they can find you on social media, stalk you. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't really have a Twitter. I sort of had one, but I don't really use it. But um, Instagram, A B L U G O I G, A B L U G O I G, because you know I'm not conceited enough yet for me to be like the A B L U G O. Maybe one day, but <laughs> but not today. But A B L U G O I G on Instagram. You can find me on Facebook at A B L U G O A period B period. Lugo, space Lugo. I, my, my name is seven letters, two dots in a space. So it works out. I'm definitely going to have you back on, man, because this is, you know, that that we were able to have this conversation, I think is so so important, you know, who we are and the conversation we're having is just so rare. And I know people who, you know, they, they'll, they'll do all kinds of stuff, but their own sexual life, their own love life is a, they, 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 hide it from themselves right their own desires their own fears they hide it from themselves and who is that serving no nobody. one nobody and it's why the world's getting sadder and sadder because people aren't able to be honest with themselves first of all so I mean, never mind being honest with other people yeah we got other conversations we're gonna have that's what we're definitely gonna do for sure <laughs> thank you so much have a good weekend and uh, oh it's thursday i forgot yeah. to it's I'm okay. doing something tomorrow. But yeah, have a good weekend. And I'll, I'll you know, we always talk on Instagram. Peace, man. Yes. Hablamos. Ciao.